So in case you did not watch the vice presidential debate last night, J.D. Vance won. He won big time, absolutely, objectively. There is literally no question that he took home the prize. It is so obvious that he won that it almost makes me feel bad for Tim Walz. J.D. didn't dominate because Tim was particularly bad. It was just that J.D. was so good, so Tim literally did not even have a chance. This is everything that you need to know. Before we dive into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the comment section channel if you've not already, and of course, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our episodes, especially in this absolutely insane election season. All right, so first of all, I mean, literally, like, the first thing that I noticed and the thing that I think most people online are really honing in on is how nervous Tim Walls looks. I mean, obviously, this is the biggest moment of his career. This is the world stage. A lot was riding on this night. Kamala was counting on him. She was probably cackling in his ear. And you could tell because this poor man, like he was frantically taking down notes, writing down ideas for the entirety of the debate. Like, I literally think we saw more of the top of his bald head than we did his actual face. Meanwhile, Vance literally did not pick up a pen for the first 45 minutes of the debate. I think he wrote something down during the abortion question and then did not write down anything else. I mean, literally, he was just there. He looked so strong and confident and looked almost pleased to be there while Walls was like fidgeting and concerned and often very exacerbated. This is one of my favorite screenshots from it, but there are so many of these because he would turn and look at Vance and just look horrified. Don't be intimidated, Squidward. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! Now, another thing that I noticed that really cracked me up is that Tim Walls is significantly shorter than J.D. Vance. And obviously, I don't hold that against him. Love short guys. But they literally had his camera angle lower. You can see because of the red line behind him. And they zoomed in on him to make sure that he did not look small. They actually made him look bigger than J.D. Vance, which just kept cracking me up. And it did not help him in the slightest because, again, he looked so scared that it did not matter how much you zoomed in, we could tell. Rob Smith put all of this well, and he said... Walls is bombing this. He is fidgety and nervous, whiny and feminine. He projects weakness. This is not a man who is fit to be second in command. This is a man who is likely not even in command of his own home. I mean, have you seen his wife? I think that is actually very true. Turn the page. Now, another hysterical moment was when the moderators were asking about parental leave and support for families, and Walls threw all of these attacks at Trump and advance and at Republicans in general, saying, you know, we're the pro-women ones, we're the pro-family ones, and J.D. just stood there. He took it, and then it was his turn to give a response, and he just refuted every single one of those talking points and laid out the plan that he and Trump has, and Walls was staring at him, aggressively nodding his head yes at everything that J.D. Vance was proposing. He was like, actually, yeah, that's a great idea. Let me write this down to tell Kamala later. Like, buddy, maybe you're running with the wrong candidate. Somebody commented and said, Walls looked like he fell in love with him too. It is unanimous. Also, speaking of falling in love, this is the last thing I'll say about, you know, image and appearance. The ladies, guys. They love J.D. Vance. I love J.D. Vance. That man and his crisp blue eyes breaking the fourth wall throughout the entire debate, shooting the camera looks every time that Wall said something absolutely ridiculous. It worked. Just listen to these comments. He is definitely working the camera better than I've seen any other candidate do in a long time. One woman said his eyes are ridiculously beautiful. Jack Posobiec said no homo, but J.D. Vance is so telegenic. It is insane. Harrison Crank said pretty wild. The people already voted without ever looking at J.D. Vance's beautiful eyes. Somebody else said J.D. Vance, take me. Another person said I've been astonished liberal my whole life, but J.D. Vance is kind of hot, not gonna lie. I mean, literally, in the post-show, Jesse Waters literally said J.D. Vance was beautiful. You can't fight it. Man or woman, you just had to be captivated by those eyes. I mean, the moment that J.D. Vance first locked eyes with the camera and gave that blue steel, Tim Walls probably knew it was over. He should have gone home, gone to bed, gotten a good night's sleep on his amazing Helix mattress. I don't know if he has a Helix mattress, but everyone should get one. And guys, I literally talk about this all the time because it is truly this amazing, but there is something magical about my Helix mattress. It is like I discovered a whole new realm of comfort and rejuvenation. It is seriously the greatest mattress I have ever had. It feels like I sink into a cloud every single night. Alex even loves it, and we usually have very different sleep preferences. I mean, it is just so amazing. And I mean, we should expect that from Helix because they have harnessed years of extensive mattress expertise to offer a truly elevated sleep experience. If you've not already checked out their new Helix Elite Collection, you need to. It is so amazing. This collection includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. I have the Dusk Luxe. Again, it is so amazing. And if you're nervous about buying a mattress online, you do not have to be because 
because they have you covered with their sleep quiz. This is an innovative feature that matches your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress, eliminating the need to settle for a mattress designed for somebody else. I took the Helix quiz late last year. It led me to their Dusk Lux mattress, which again was just a perfect match for my needs. Plus, Helix has a 10-year warranty and you can try out their mattresses for 100 nights risk-free. They will even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but I promise you, you will. They also have financing options and flexible payment plans to ensure that a great night's sleep is never too far away. Now, if you're ready to be as excited about sleeping in your mattress as I am, Helix is offering my viewers 20% off all mattress orders. So go to helixsleep.com slash Brett to redeem that offer. Again, guys, that is helixsleep.com slash Brett. Might need to send that link to Tim Walls because I think he's going to need a deep, long nap after losing this debate. Now, moving on from the eyes, because that's not as important, this debate was held on CBS. And to their sort of credit, I do think that these moderators maybe learned a bit from the last debate with Trump and Kamala because they were not as involved, but that still did not stop them from being incredibly, incredibly biased. Similar to the case with Trump, they asked JD very pointed accusatory questions while offering ball softball questions and the opportunity to respond to what JD Vance was saying when JD Vance did not often get that opportunity. And even though they had agreed not to fact check the candidates, they often threw in little asides to each other in lieu of doing that. Like, oh yes, don't you know this is happening? Oh, I'm gonna throw it to you, that's all. I mean, it was just like a comedy show. And then halfway through the debate, they did try to fact check Vance and it might just be the best clip from the entire night because watch how JD handled this. Just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you. Senator, we have no, 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 so much to get to. Mar Margaret, you, I, I think Nora. it's important we're because- We're gonna turn the, out of the, the debate, economy, thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't gonna we're... fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app, so good. where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open Walls border looks. wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our Thank you, own Senator, for leadership. describing the legal and process. And those Kamala, laws, we have so Harris much to get to, that Senator. Pathway. Those laws have, so have been much... on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, the the, the we CBP have... one app has not been on the books since 1990. Then they turned off their mics like a lesser man would have just gone, oh, okay, you're fact checking me, I'll stop. J.D. Vance, not a lesser man. He said, no, 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 you're gonna sit down and I'm gonna tell you exactly why you're wrong. Now they were quick to try and correct J.D. there, but of course they did not fact check Walls at all. For example, Governor Walls repeatedly refuted the claim that he supports abortion up until the moment of birth and that this is not real, this doesn't happen, that's not a law, and yet, here is the bill that he supports and that he literally passed in his own state. Walls signs abortion up to birth bill, entrenching Minnesota as a global outlier on abortion policy. Imagine that. But there was no correction issued. He also claimed that Kamala actually was not responsible for this immigration crisis. It's actually because of Trump. And actually, migrant crossings are down since Biden took office. Again, mm. er, wrong. Here we go. Fact check. Walls said that there are fewer crossings today than when Donald Trump left office. According to Customs and Border Patrol, total enforcement encounters for 2020 were 646,000, and in 2021, it was 1.9 million, 10 months into 2024, and it is 2.7 million. And then this woman replied to herself, and she said, want just general encounters, not enforcement. 95,000 in January of 2021 when Trump left office, 158,000 for August, and that is after Biden's executive order, which he could have done years ago, brought down the number a bit. Boom, there you go. Qualls also said that children were not being used as mules to move drugs and migrants into our country. That is another lie. My friend Liz Wheeler jumped on this immediately and she said 325,000 children lost after being abused by coyotes in recycling rings to get criminal aliens over the US border and set free into our nation. It should make you sick to our stomach and Kamala Harris is to blame. Kamala is literally on camera, guys, accepting the job as borders are and yet she's been there twice. She's literally done nothing. All she has done is open up the border with her negligence. Habit Phillips, who's one of our reporters here at Daily Wire, he is just fabulous. He tweeted about this as well. And he said, did Walls just say that children aren't being used by cartels to smuggle drugs across the border? Kamala's own administration has literally admitted that that is happening. It is not even up for debate. Well, one would think that it's not up for debate, but that's not how the world works in 2024. Now, even though they offered no fact checks for Walls' claims on immigration, I would say that J.D. Vance did a masterful job laying out the situation 
television amidst all of these lies. Just listen. Margaret, my point is that we already have massive child separations thanks to Kamala Harris's open border. And I didn't accuse Kamala Harris of inviting drug mules. I said that she enabled the Mexican drug cartels to operate freely in this country. And we know that they use children as drug mules. That's another point that we just have to hone in on. He says, actually, this is what I said. Tim Walls looking at him goes, well, yeah, it's like laughable, guys. This is a sitcom. All right, I'll let him continue. For three years, Kamala Harris went out bragging that she was going to undo Donald Trump's border policy. She did exactly that. The only thing that she did when she became the vice president, when she became the appointed border czar, was to undo 94 Donald Trump executive actions that opened the border. First of all, the gross majority of what we need to do at the southern border is just empowering law enforcement to do their job. I've been to the southern border more than our border czar, Kamala Harris has been. So and good. it's actually heartbreaking. There was a great thing that J.D. Vance said, and I think that he was very cordial. He was very polite. He said, Tim, I actually think you have a very, very difficult job today because you have to stand here and you have to defend this woman. And Tim was just like, mm -hmm. this man has not been in the executive branch. He's stepping in here and this poor guy, I mean, I shouldn't call him poor guy because he's evil in my opinion, but he has to answer for all of these absolutely insane, terrible things that Biden and Harris has done. And he's just like, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Literally nodding along with J.D. Vance. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. It is a disgrace, Tim. And I actually think, I agree with you. I think you want to solve this problem Problem, but I don't think that Kamala Harris does. Oh, it is insane to me how refreshing it feels to hear somebody speak to the American people and say, I care about you first. I am putting you first. I'm representing you because for so many years now, it literally feels like we have become second class citizens in our own country. That was just a brilliant response. I think that he absolutely dominated that topic. It was brilliant, even amidst all of the lies and the lack of fact checking. In another factual blunder, J.D. Vance pressed walls on censorship and on the First Amendment to which he had no response. All he said was, hey, you know, I don't, I, you know, we don't run Facebook. I can't control what gets censored online, buddy. You are literally on camera saying that the First Amendment is conditional. That went viral literally two weeks ago. We know that you said that. Also, Mark Zuckerberg literally just exposed your entire party, basically the entire U.S. government, for pressuring them to censor and silence dissenting Americans during COVID and during the 2020 election. You can't do this whole, we don't know what happens at big tech. You can't play that game anymore. But you know what? Hey, let's give Tim the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was blundering. Maybe he forgot. Maybe he was just nervous after he accidentally said that he has become friends with school shooters. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Let's listen to that again. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. I just have no words. Like, I'm seriously hoping that that was just a mix up. I'm sure that he just misspoke. But regardless, and unfortunately for him, that has now become the most viral moment of this debate. Like in the last debate we had, they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. And now we have, I've become friends with school shooters. Uh Oh, spaghetti -os. Contrastingly, JD has come out solid and on top on literally all accounts. Most people aren't talking about how bad Tim Walls is or blunders or how the moderators weren't fair. They are simply talking about how good he was. I mean, just listen to his response on the economy. If you notice what Governor Waltz just did is he said, first of all, Donald Trump has to listen to the experts. And then when he acknowledged that the experts screwed up, he said, well, Donald Trump didn't do nearly as, as good of a job as the statistics no, that's a show gross generalization. that he did. My favorite thing is when he like looks to the moderators like, mm, Mommy, are you going to, are you going to correct him? Do you hear, I mean, literally, like what is going on? Okay, sorry, continue JD, this is gonna be excellent. You've gotta pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver lower inflation, which of course he did. And then you simultaneously got to defend Kamala Harris's atrocious economic record, which has made gas, groceries, and housing unaffordable for American citizens. I was raised by a woman who would sometimes go into medical debt so that she could put food on the table in our household. I know what it's like to not be able to afford the things that you need to afford. Oh, I love it. I mean, it's just so fantastic. And multiple times throughout the debate, J.D. Vance talked about his childhood. He talked about the way that he was raised, about the fact that his grandmother was the one who raised him. He grew up in a drug riddled family. He actually came from a low middle class household, which I'm sure you guys know has now become a major talking point in this campaign, considering that Kamala answers literally every question with, I was raised in a middle class household. And Tim Walls actually did the same thing because they asked him why he lied about something. And he was like, I grew up a middle class kid and we would ride bikes till the street lights went on. I mean, it was just so ridiculous. But the point is, J.D. Vance 
was actually a middle class child. He actually grew up in poverty. He knows true economic struggle. Unlike these buffoons that just throw it out there because they think that it sounds good. And the way that he answered this economic question, again, was just masterful. Like this is the issue that most Americans are concerned with. He spoke directly to them in ways that they can understand, offering a way forward, offering hope, while rightfully attacking the policies that got us here. It was brilliant. And he managed to keep circling back to this issue time and time again. I mean, when he was asked about childcare and parental leave, he brought it up, saying the parents need tax credit and support to be able to care for their children and therefore bolster the child care industry. He brought it up while talking about immigration. He even brought it up in his closing statement, which I just think was so, so incredibly smart. Just listen. One of the issues we didn't talk about was energy. And I remember when I was being raised by my grandmother, when she didn't have enough money to turn on the heat some nights because Ohio gets pretty cold at night and because money was often very tight. And I believe, as a person who wants to be your next vice president, that we are a rich and prosperous enough country where every American, whether they're rich or poor, ought to be able to turn on their heat in the middle of a cold winter night. That's gotten more difficult, thanks to Kamala Harris's energy policies. Now, I've been in politics long enough to do what Kamala Harris does when she stands before the American people and says that on day one, she's gonna work on all these challenges I just listed. She's been the vice president for three and a half years. Day one was 1,400 days ago, and her policies have made these problems worse. We need a new direction. We need a president who has already done this once before and did it well. Please okay. vote for Donald Trump. And whether you vote for me or vote for Tim Walz, I just want to say, I'm so proud to be doing this, and I'm rooting for you. God bless you, and good night. That was just the most amazing way to end the debate. I mean, it had me, like, fired up and emotional about being an American. I mean, just knowing that there could be better days ahead and obviously it landed. Like Alex and I were scrolling through all the networks after the debate and no one could argue that Vance did not win. And they were all emotionally connected to him and the things that he was saying. Colin Ruge posted this and said, media reactions after the J.D. Vance versus Tim Walls debate. Geraldo Rivera, J.D. Vance won the debate. NBC, does Tim Walls have a problem with the truth? Chris Cuomo, J.D. Vance fact-checked the moderators and he was right. CNN's John King, Vance carried important issues. CNN's Jake Tapper, J.D. Vance is a better debater. MSNBC had a live meltdown. I mean, guys, even New York Magazine and the New York Times cannot deny it. J.D. Vance may be unprincipled, but he is smart and slick. New York Times said Vance his dominant debate performance shows why he's Trump's running mate. I mean, New York Times even published a second piece this morning writing that JD made Trumpism sound calm, clear, and coherent. Like, what a change from 2020. Like, this would have never even been considered or published in 2020 or 2016. We should all be so fired up and inspired because this debate was just a massive win for common sense and for the political right, not just in terms of this specific election and what will happen in November, but in a much broader way because J.D. Vance is showing us what the next generation of political leadership can look like. He is ushering us into a new era. He is calm, he's intelligent, he's stable, he's stoic, he's young. It is what America needs. Like I'm looking at him, I'm looking at Tulsi Gabbard, I'm looking at Vivek Ramaswamy, I'm looking at Nicole Shanahan. The future is so bright. These people are so brilliant. And I think that J.D. Vance showed us what is ahead of us. And you know, to Tim Walz's credit as well, they were also both just so incredibly civil, which was just so refreshing. They acknowledged where they both agreed with each other. They shared empathy for each other's experiences. They stayed on stage with their wives to chat after the fact and shake hands and catch up. It was shockingly kind and normal. After a decade of drama and chaos, seriously starting with the Obamas, this felt new and refreshing. And I could not be more excited for November. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of the comment section and maybe even learned something new. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you want some hopefully more uplifting content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.